All right. So I'm here uh, with the People Progressing uh, show, and I am over the moon happy and excited right now to introduce you guys to Spencer Crandall. Probably most of you know him. Um, I had him in class. He played football for us. It was a great, and I will say this about Spencer first and foremost, he was an unbelievable leader at our school. He wasn't just a football player. He just wasn't an, a student. He was a student athlete, but more importantly, he was a leader that cared about people. And uh, that's kind of rare from a 17, 18 year old kid. And he, he was mature beyond his years. So Spencer, thanks for coming on. And I just want you to first kind of tell us where you're at in your music career. Well, thank you so much. That is super sweet. And uh, I, when you reached out, I, I didn't hesitate at all because you're one of my favorite teachers and coaches I've ever had. So I'm honored to be on. I'm pumped and I can't wait to share this with everybody and it's going to be great. Um, I, yeah, so I've been in Nashville for about four and a half years now. I'm from Highlands Ranch, Colorado. I went to Thunder Ridge and um, kind of my, my beginnings. And now I've been in Nashville for a couple years. I do country music and um, I'll just kind of give you the the one sheet, although it's awkward to talk about myself, I'll kind of let you guys know where I, where I am so we can talk about where I've been. And I'm going to interrupt you. Don't be humble here. Let us know because <laughs> it's pretty impressive. Let us know about the 5.5 million streams on Spotify. Deal. Deal. All right. So we just hit uh, 50 million aggregate streams as an independent artist. I just put out an album a couple weeks ago, went number one on iTunes on the country charts, number four, all genre. Um, that's my second number one and, um, gotten to open up for really cool people like Josh Turner and Dustin Lynch and Morgan Wallen and Chris Lane and, and so on and so forth. And, um, I just hit 1.2 million followers on TikTok, at like a quarter million on Instagram. And those things have been really, um, so important in my journey and getting to where I am. Um, only been doing it for a couple of years. I didn't grow up doing music. So, um, it's, it's fun to be be doing what I'm doing now. So, so tell us about, you just said this, because I tell this story to anybody and everybody. Tell us the story, how you got into music, because this is awesome. Yeah, so I, like I said, I just wasn't a music person. I mean, I did football because that's what my friends did. So I was like, great, I'll just do that. And then I actually fell in love with it. Um, ended up playing, getting a scholarship and going to play football in college. But before that, there's a thing at Thunder Ridge High School called the Senior Project. And for the Senior Project, you have to have a learning stretch, something that, um, you know, challenges you. So I was like, well, I don't think I'm very musically talented. So I'll try to play the guitar and write a song. And I learned a couple chords on the guitar. I wrote a song and uh, I showed up that day. I played it. I thought everything went well. I went home and I got a call from the principal's office uh, saying one of the, a couple of people on the board had accused me of like basically cheating. They said that like I had been doing it for a while and there's no way that I just learned that. And I was like devastated at the time because, oh, my God, I'm going to have to redo or like fail my senior year. But it all worked out and it ended up just being a super big compliment. And I got an apology from a couple of those people on that board just saying, look, we weren't trying to frame you of anything. You, it just seemed impossible that you had just started doing that. So I was like, well, that's very sweet. And it kind of gave me this little seed, a little bug in me that was like, oh, well, that was really fun. And I loved writing that song. And, you know, the chords were kind of easy to me. So maybe there's something there. But I never dreamed, like, I didn't know people could do this as a living or get to travel and, and play shows and all that. So I just went to go play college football. And that was that. And you went to Colorado Mesa University where I went. Yeah, go Mavs. Yeah, CMU. Harvard of the West, baby. Harvard of the West. You're dang right. So that was fun, man. I had a lot of fun there. And yeah, my goal was to play four or five years and get huge and strong. And then, you know, I was like, I'll be that guy who plays D2, but ends up in the league somehow. And I was like planning on that. Didn't go as planned. <laughs> but you, so let's go back to that senior project. You had never played the guitar before. Mm -hmm. You'd never written a song before. And you had a mentor, right? I mean, you had to have a senior uh, project yeah. mentor. So they helped you learn how to do that. How long did it take you from the time you started playing the guitar and, and wrote your song until you had to play it at the senior project? Well, I'm a huge procrastinator. So I waited till like the very end and I, um, I got super lucky. I mean, I picked up the guitar. I went on YouTube 
and I worked with my mentor, which is the worship pastor at my parents' church. His name's Danny Ortley. He's such a cool guy. He ended up giving me like a guitar and just a really great conversations early on about who you want to be as an artist and songwriting and all that stuff. And, you know, honestly, it took me a couple of weeks and I just knocked it out and it just came really natural and easy to me. And I think it's kind of funny sometimes like that was never my dream, but it was almost the, the dream that chased me instead of me chasing it. It just felt like at all turns, people would be like, you know, I'd be in the car with my friends and, and I would sing along to the radio or something. And they had no idea that I sang. I didn't really know I had any idea of saying, they'd be like, have you ever done that? Have you ever thought about that? I'd be like, no. And then the senior project happened. People like, you should do that. I'm like, eh, probably not. And then it just felt like everything was pointing towards that. And then you went for it. Yeah. I mean, it took me a while to kind of even get up the courage in my dorm room and stuff. Like, I, cause once I get hurt, I'm playing football. I get two massive shoulder surgeries and the doctors are like, please stop doing this. Yeah. You are done. Go do something else. So as you know, sports is such an identity thing. Yeah. And I would go to a party and before I got my surgeries, people would be like, Oh, who are you? And I'm like, I'm Spencer. I play football. Like that's who I was. Yeah. And then I'd walk into the party and I'm like, I'm Spencer. I have no idea. And I'm so lost. And then all of a sudden my major didn't make sense. I broke up with my high school girlfriend. I felt like I needed to transfer schools. It just felt like everything came crumbling down. And in that time, I just was lost and bored. And I just picked up this guitar in my dorm room. And I, I one time was like, why don't I just post from my phone a little video on Instagram back when it was 15 second videos and it literally got zero likes. <laughs> not one person liked it. And I was like, okay, well, that's probably not for me. And then I just tried again and I tried again and I tried again. And then eventually I was like, okay, well, I'm going to ask my friends and family to tag a couple people. So I'm like, tag a friend, tag a family member in this video. And three became nine, became 18, became, you know, that snowball effect is real and the grassroots effect is real. So I leaned into that and really learned the internet really hard and went at it. And I'm still going at it really hard because I, I believe in it. So what you, you talked about, this is just so awesome. You talked about, you know, the first time you did it and you posted it, got zero likes and all that kind of stuff. And you're questioning yourself and everything. What was it inside you that kept you going, that kept you all of a sudden you have a dream and all of a sudden you have a, a passion that you didn't even know you had and a purpose that a purpose that was greater than yourself and all this stuff. What, what kept you going and not saying, you know, I'm just going to go get my degree and go work. Yeah. I started to ask myself really big questions. And one of those questions was, you know, cause I had this big deconstruction period where I'm like, well, if football is not who I am, is this major who I am? Is the way I dress the way I am? Is my religion who I am? Like I literally put everything on the table and I said, if I pick it up and it comes with me, then it's good. If I don't, then I've transcended that thing and it does not need to be a part of my life. And something that happened was I would put my major on the table and try to pick it up. I'm like, I don't like this. I don't enjoy. I'd be sitting in school, like scratching my eyes out and just like in pain reading my notes. And, and then what I do when I was stressed out, I'd pick up this dinky guitar and I'd sing a melody or sing a cover or I'd have all my people on my floor in my dorm room and they'd just be requesting songs. I'd be pulling up the things and everyone's drinking and laughing. I'm like, I, I love entertaining people. So how can I do that? And I, I started to ask myself, you know, big questions without limits on them. And when I put limits on them, I could very quickly talk myself out of it. Of course, like that dream is crazy. It's a 1% of a 1% dream. But when I was like, okay, but money doesn't exist. Nobody else exists. I'm on the planet alone. What do I do every day? What do I want to do for the rest of my life? That's what I wanted to do. So I got there. And then once I got there, I just locked it in. And I, I feel fortunate that I have the support system that I have with my parents and friends and family. And but I also had a lot of people who were like, I don't know, man. And I just kind of told them like, I don't care. I don't really care what you think. I'm going to try this. And I just kind of put blinders on and went for it. What an awesome story. So when you were performing, you said you would get in your dorm room and start playing and all the people in your door, your floor would come in and request songs and everything. That's when your purpose hit. That's yeah. when you found your purpose because Something your purpose all of a sudden became 
greater than yourself, right? Your purpose became, I am here to help other people be happy. Yeah. And to really like see that, cause I had always heard people like, Oh, music makes people happy. And I was like, that's kind of hack or like cliche, but then you go play a show and everyone is experiencing the same joy together. All this dopamine's hitting at the same time and there's nothing like it on the world. And I was like, Oh yeah, that's real. I got to do that. There's nothing cooler than that. Because you're helping people. Yeah. Because you're serving people. You're making their life better. Even if it's for an hour, you're yeah. making their life better. Absolutely. That, and then you found your purpose there. And I, God, that's such an awesome story. Um, hurdles. How much you mentioned your parents. What, what's the biggest thing besides the support and love that your parents give you? What's the biggest thing that you get from your parents? It's a great question. I mean, it is so much love and support. I think um, my parents are, are really good at helping me zoom out. I get really in the thick of things and I'm like, I'm doomed. I'm here. I'm, and a, a parent's perspective is outside of you. And they can see, you know, they saw you in diapers and they could see you in college. And they're like, look, take six months and think about it. That's not crazy because they've lived that many more months and they know that as you get older, that becomes arbitrary and, and it doesn't matter. You just have to really keep thinking and pushing yourself. And so it's good to have people, uh, you know, I always call it my wise counsel. You want to have five to 10 people who you really feel like you can go to and they are not yes people. They are people who want what's actually best for you and they will strike down ideas or lift up ideas that you've struck down and say, look, this is what's going to fill you up because we know you to your core. We know you better than you. So just trust us here and at least give it a try and an option. At the same time, there's a couple of times where my parents told me things and I just have to go with my gut. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but I'd rather die on my own sword. So I always say like you, you go to the wise council, but at the end of the day, it's you out there on the battlefield. You got to figure out what, what's going to make you happy. And what's cool with that is even if you've, you know, you, like you said, fall on your own sword and sometimes you had to go with your own gut and everything. But one of the things that gave you confidence in, in the ability to do that, because a lot of us have a hard time doing that, making up our own mind and thinking, well, I got all these people telling me this, but you know what? In my gut, I think I need to do this. Yeah. But the thing that gave you the confidence was you always knew whatever happened at the end result of that is your awesome parents were always going to be there no matter what. They were Absolutely. always going to love and support you no matter what decision you made. So that gives you the confidence to make those decisions. Yeah, and, and how lucky am I? I mean, I, I feel like I won the lottery times 10 to be born to my parents and my family, to be a white, straight male born in Highlands Ranch with the education system. Like, my privilege is out the door, and I, I acknowledge that. So part of my story is just immense gratitude and kind of scratching my head of why me, how did I get so lucky um, to be in, in the places that I am? Cause there's so many people who want to do what I do, but they can't move to Nashville and their parents help them out financially. They, my parents paid for my college degree. That is not normal. Yeah. That is, that's very outside of the norm. And I'm so incredibly lucky to do that and or to have that. And so my, my parental support is, is out of this world and I, I'm, I'm very, very grateful. Okay. Let, let's get into your music a little bit. When you're writing a song, what is the thing that propels you when you're writing that song? So you sit down, I don't know how long it takes you to write a song or maybe sure. you can go into that a little bit, but what is the, the overall number one thing that drives you to write the songs that you write? It's a couple of things. I think I kind of had this checklist in my brain and number one, it has to be authenticity and it has to make me feel something like to my core. So like when I, you know, there's a couple songs on this album that like every time the hook hits, I just feel it every time. And then matched with it being my own story, I feel like it just flows out of me so much easier than contriving something or, you know, I did that a lot when I moved to Nashville at first, cause I thought that's what you do. Like, Oh, you write a song or like somebody else's song. And I think a big turning point in this album was leaning into my stories. And, you know, like I have a song called good thing on that album uh, that I just put out. And it's all about 
it's a good thing that it didn't work out. And I talk about ever since I was 10, I wanted to get, I wanted to play football. Then I get the scholarship. Then it gets taken away. Thank God it's a good thing. I dated this girl. I thought I was going to marry her, but then it didn't work out. Thank God it's a good thing. Those stories are harder to tell because they're yours and it's a little bit more vulnerable, but it's so much more rewarding when people come back to you and they say, thank you for being honest. Thank you for telling your story because it gives permission to other people to live their lives and to tell their stories and to overcome their stories. So that's a big part of it. I think, um, you know, sonically, like figuring out what my thing was for a long time, I just wanted to be like a Diet Coke version of somebody else. And then I found that the marketplace has a lot of Diet Coke versions of a lot of people. What's going to make me stand out is going full Spencer mode and saying, look, it might be weird or it might be different, but that's why people are going to love it is because there isn't this thing in the market. So I found my own lane. Um, and then I just really push for cool, new, different ways to say things, you know, instead of, um, the same old way or, you know, especially in songs like cliches or, or trite sayings are, are kind of hard to avoid. Cause it's the way you want to communicate something to someone like I will always love you is a hit because everyone has always felt that way. But my challenge to myself is how do I tell my story, but then put it in a way that is so specific to me and cool and different that it becomes universal to others. So that's part of the songwriting process. Every single one's different. Everyone kind of feels like they're your baby. So it's always a little, little different. That's pretty cool. And, and you mentioned the hook um, when you get, you feel the hook inside you or whatever. Um, I think that's really interesting because the hook is, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think the hook is you all of a sudden it hits you and you're like, wow, that's it. Because in your back of your mind, you're thinking this could really help people. Yeah. This could really make a difference in someone else's life. This could really make someone happy. This could really make someone rethink things. This could really make somebody reflect on where yeah. they're at in their life and so forth. And that's the hook that gets you because you know that you get that out and you're telling your story and saying, Hey, I'm just a normal person just like you. Mm -hmm. You can do it. And that's the hook. And that's that purpose part I'm talking about, about everything that's dr driving you right now is the purpose of helping and serving others in terms of this is going to make someone feel great inside. You yeah. I, I really believe, I really believe storytelling can change the world. Like just being authentic and telling people what you've been through, what you want to go through, what you wish you didn't go through. Those things are powerful. And I've never learned anything from anyone who showed up to the party and was like, so I tried this one thing and I was so good at it. And then I tried another thing and I was world-class. And then I tried another thing and I won the Olympics. Like that's not the people I learned from. The people in my life who are great mentors are vulnerable and they say, I actually really tripped up here. And the way that you can avoid this is that's, that's beautiful. That's storytelling. And I found that especially in country music, like you have the ability to tell your authentic story to, you know, now luckily I, I get to tell it to millions of people. Like that's crazy. And, and the fact that, my song, my person has 30,000 videos on TikTok made to that sound. And it's people getting engaged, first dance. Uh, you know, it's like a slideshow of their parents who just passed away, who were together for 50, 60 years. It's a boyfriend telling their girlfriend they love them for the first time. That's the power of music. That is life changing. So I'll always fight for that in the room. Because if I don't feel like if I feel like it's good, good is the enemy of great. So that's especially in this last year, I'm pushing for these songs like, I've got to have big songs to make a big impact. And, and it's tough because writing songs ain't easy. So, <laughs> but, but as long as you have that, that overall all goal of serving others, like you said, yeah. um, someone loses a parent and they're playing one of your songs at the slideshow of their funeral. How powerful is that? I mean, to, just to be able to make someone else's life better even if it's for 15 minutes at a funeral. Yeah. It's so powerful that you have the opportunity to do that. And what, what do you think your number one passion is? Um, it's probably two things. It's storytelling and entertaining. Those two things just drive me. And I, I've been that way. Since, I mean, you had me in class. Like I'm just, I am a class clown ham. I love making people laugh. I love making people smile. 
I don't know where that comes from. Like I just, ever since I was little, I wanted to make my parents laugh. I want to make everybody laugh. I want to make people smile. And, um, and I loved, you know, when people were going around and telling stories at the campfire, that's when I came to life. And so now that I'm an adult, it isn't much more complicated than that. I just have found a medium and a way to channel that. And, and it's, I feel so lucky that I get to do what I love to do every day. Okay. So let's go, let's go a little bit into adversity. Yeah. Um, I know moving from here, from Colorado where we're at to Nashville Mm -hmm. and getting into the, the country music scene down there and stuff. It's an awesome city. I've been down there so many times. It's awesome. How much adversity have you hit during that time where people have said no? Or, you know, you, I, I always say that life is not a marathon. People say that life's a marathon. It's not a marathon. I, I say this in every podcast I do. It's more of a steeplechase where you're going, you're going, you're going, and then you hit a hurdle and you have to get over it and you have to get through it. Yeah. How many of those hurdles have you gone through? I, I know you can't speak to everyone, but sure. maybe just give a couple examples of them and what propelled you to get over them and through them. Yeah, I mean, especially in the genre that I'm in, I, I'm a boundary pusher. I like to make music that blends everything together and, and leaves people wondering what the heck was that. And I call it country music because I believe in country storytelling and the heart of America is country music and telling those stories and, and relating to those people on a day-to-day basis in their lives. So when I tell these stories in a very different way, I have, you know, you can go read my comments right now, like on TikTok, you're not country. This is, this is pop. This is whatever. And that, that was a hurdle early on just to my self-confidence. I was like, am I really not, you know, am I a fraud? Am I, am I doing the wrong thing? And, and the more that I did it, I was like, oh, (laughs) the sadness that it takes, the brokenness that it takes a human to sit down on a Tuesday afternoon, watch a video and comment how much they hate it. There is a fundamental brokenness in their life. And that makes me really sad and realizing it has nothing to do with me. I'm doing what I want to do. That doesn't steer me from my path. It is something for them. And and a lot of times I'll comment, I'm like, hey man, always here to talk to you. Hey man, uh, I'll buy your tickets if you ever want to come to a show. And at first I'm like, oh, BS, I would never do that. Two years later, they'll be like, hey man, that was really sweet and uh, you know, I've, I'm out of my divorce and I just like to let you know, like, I apologize for that. It happens all the time. So wow, a lot of adversity in that way. I think, um, you know, there's just the, the adversity of the, the, the industry that I'm in. I mean, there's thousands of people vying for, let's be conservative and say 30 to 40 spots on radio. I mean, there's a top 60, but those first 20 are in and out every day. So that first that top 30 where you can really make an impact on people and at a mass volume. And most of those people are legends. Then you have B list and C list. So to be an incoming artist vying for one of, you know, thousands of spots is incredibly difficult. And I think to not get in my own head, just moving to Nashville and being like, you know, if if you're sick that day, thousands of songs got written and you can really get in your head about like, Oh, I didn't, I wasn't the best today. Someone moved forward and I moved backward. But I think comparison is an adversity that is toxic. It is cancerous and it's self-inflicted. You know, if you're running the steeplechase and you went and shot your own foot, you'd be so mad at yourself. But yet we do this every day as humans. We, we shoot ourselves in the feet by, by doubting ourselves, by comparing ourselves. And I, something clicked a couple years ago me and my manager just started saying, good for them. That's not for us. If it was for us, it'd be for us, but it's for them. Just like really going through that. Like people be like, do you hear so-and-so got a record deal? They have half of what you have going on. I'm like, that's totally great. Good for them. There's more than enough to go around. I can build the tallest building in the world without knocking down anybody else's building. And I think just these mental shifts are what got me through adversity. It's not like this, you know, crazy moment. It's years of going through this in trial and error and pushing myself to say, I can be better than this. I don't have to compare myself. I don't have to play the games that have been played so many times before I can transcend that and, and do it differently. And I think I'm, I'm doing that. And I'm, I'm really proud of myself for, 
you know, six years now, I feel like I'm finally on the right track of like, it doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. Find what you love, go tunnel vision at it and do not care about numbers. Do not care about what anybody thinks. Do what you love and you will be happy. And that's your perspective. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. That's the perspective part. So when we talk about purpose, perspective, and passion, you've nailed all, all three of them. Right. And, yeah. and, and when you talk about that, it's, it's, um, it's pretty crazy when you talk about, I always have a saying that says, com, when you compare, you take the joy out of life. Yeah. And, uh, and you nailed it. I mean, that's exactly right. And you had a choice. And that's what I want people listening to this to understand is you have the same choice as what Spencer had. Because Spencer could have had a choice is kept, where he kept comparing. He kept trying to beat his head against the wall by comparing himself to others and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. Or he made the choice that said, I'm not going to do that anymore. And that's the thing I don't think people understand is you have that power of choice. You have the power of choice to figure that out and to make that, that mindset change like you did. And since you've made that mindset change, look at where you've gone. Yeah, it's pretty yeah absolutely. And I, I think um, the only distinction that I'd make is that it's not that I did or that it happened. It is an everyday choice because yeah. I could still, I mean, it's not like I'm infallible. Like I get on Instagram and I, I get caught in it, but what's important is to, I liken it to an immune system. Yes, you can get sick, but how fast do you recover? So if I'm on TikTok and I'm on someone's page and I'm like, oh my God, they have 9 million followers and I only have 1 million followers. Now my immune system so fast that it catches that and the antibodies that is my self-confidence and my ability to not compare just attacks it. It's like, yeah, but that's not for us. And, and what we have is great. And I wouldn't trade what we have. And so that's awesome. Having those conversations with myself on the daily, that, that is the game changer is building that immune system for yourself, making those choices. Like you said. So cool. I mean, I, cause I, I'm kind of in the, almost in the same situation right now where I'm always sitting there looking I was, who else is out there doing what I'm trying to do, Yeah, trying to help people, trying to influence people, inspire people, do those types of things. And I'm listening to podcasts and I'm watching this and I'm looking at how many likes they have and, you know, how many books they've sold and all those kind of things. And I finally, the other day, I'm like, you know what? It is, it's good for them. I'm happy for them, but you know, I can do this on my own too. I don't need to sit there and keep reading books and keep doing, I, even though I'm going to, because I want to keep growing and learning all the time, but I don't want to compare myself to those people anymore. I want to be my own person and see if I can help people just like they're doing and I think that's so powerful. What you're saying is, is, again, the choice. You have the choice. Whatever choice you make is the one that's going to propel you to do your passion every day. And I, you know, I, 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 I kind of talked to you a little bit before we got on this about, you know, I went to my passion every day. I never went to work. And it takes a little bit of a risk because before I got into education and teaching and coaching and so forth and doing what I'm doing now, I did work in the business world and it scared me to death. And you had kind of mentioned something like that a little bit before. So go, kind of go through that a little bit about, I, let's go back to college when you were majoring, what were you majoring in and what kind of scared you with that? You know, what kind of, uh, yeah, no, that's all awesome. I, I loved all that. Cause I just so relate. And so I'm just like soaking it in. Cause I'm like, yep, that's it, man. Um, I went to Colorado Mesa and I, uh, at first was like undeclared. Then I went to Colorado state and I declared uh, construction management. Cause I think like so many people, maybe this is anecdotal and, and you know, not relevant, but I think a lot of guys do this. They look at what their dad did and they're like, okay, well I have to do that. Like that's, that's what is I, I know. And that's what is cool. And so I started to do that. And what my dad does, he's so good at what he does. Like he's, he's the president a regional president of a fortune 500 company it's because the skill set that he has is so perfect for that i was trying to jam a square peg in a round hole man i hate math i hate details <laughs> the things that my dad is so good at um and and he sat me down you know because i was so nervous to tell him i was like i don't think i want to do this he's like buddy i love you i'm proud of you i'm gonna love you no matter what you do be happy that is so much more important than your major or your career, find what it is and, and, and do that. And I think that matched with, you know, the support and love of my parents is, is huge matched with, I think I fear 
regret more than I fear the unknown. I'd much rather try something and fail than never try it. And I think as I get older, I realize that failure is so subjective. And honestly, I like start, I've started to laugh at the idea of what a failure is. Like my favorite artists in the world have terrible songs out there. Songs that I'd never listen to, but I never hold that against them. And I always ask myself why. And it's because we judge people by the best of us, not by the worst of us. And I think our ability to try is actually just something to look up to. It's not something, you know, I, I was so afraid of people watching my process and trying that I, I didn't for a while. But then I realized I would regret not trying for the rest of my life. And I would much rather try to do music and never, you know, do it in quotes, um, but love every day and wake up. And as my coffee's pouring, thinking of hooks and, and thinking about my live show, like, having so much joy and passion, I'd rather fail at what I love than succeed at something that I'm average at. Um, and then I think I really love process. And if you love process, you'll never, you know, results are ice cream or uh, the cherry on top of the ice cream. Yeah. It is, it is not the 50 million aggregate streams or the 1.2 million TikTok followers. Those things come and they go and one minute's important and the next it's not. And, what is important, like I've boiled my life down to create things I love with people I love. If I am creating things I love with people I love on a day-to-day -day basis, I will be happy. I will be on my deathbed and say, you know what? It was a hell of a run. I gave it everything I had. And I, I fear um, the unknown way more than I fear trying to do something now. But it, it takes time too. And the grace and empathy that you have to give yourself in the trial period is immense. And so if you're listening to this and you feel like all of this is overwhelming, just try one thing and then just immediately forgive yourself. No matter what happens, be like, okay, but I tried. That's a step in the right direction. If you can start to build on that idea, that I think is at least the key to unlocking your happiness. It might not be success. Success is arbitrary, but um, you can at least unlock a day-to-day -day contentness that I think a lot of people, like you said, if 70% of people don't love what they do and could really tap into that, I think it, it could change the world for real. It would be, it'd be a good place. I don't, I don't know if you remember, but that was my saying uh, as a coach. I even had it put on the back of our T-shirts for our baseball program. I had it put on there, fear, regret. Because no, I do remember that. Absolutely. I never wanted anybody who ever played for me or I had in class to ever look back at their life and think if I would have just done this. Mm -hmm. And I never wanted that to happen. And when my kids went to college, my two oldest kids went to college, I, they were trying to figure out what to major in. And I said, major in your passion, mm -hmm. major in what you love to do. And I tell a story, it's in my book. Um, I took my dad uh, to see his 84 year old best friend from kindergarten. They've been best friends their whole life. Awesome. And, uh, this guy, his name was Joe too. And he, he uh, actually was an airline pilot for uh, commercial airlines for, that was his career. Yeah. And he's laying in, a, in his bed in his nursing home and he can't really move. And he looks over at my dad and he said, I just wish I could fly again. Mm -hmm. And it just hit me again. It's like, when I'm 84, I know that I, I'll be able to say, I just wish I could go teach and coach one more day. Yeah. That's so cool, man. That's what I want. I mean, I that's whole body goosebumps for real. That's like, that's incredible. That's what life's about. A life well lived is on your deathbed saying, I wish I had one more day of what I had. That's right. incredible. Because I say this, Spencer, when you, when you're born, you have a peace of mind, right? You're born, you kind of come out crying and everything until they do what they hope they put you in your mother's arms. And all of a sudden you have a complete 100% peace of mind mm -hmm. because subconsciously or whatever, as a baby, you basically know that your mom's going to do everything right? She's got you. And my goal for people is, is when they're on their deathbed, that they have a peace of mind. That's my goal and my purpose of what I'm doing. So if I can help somebody get to a point where they're 84, 85, hopefully by the time all you guys are on there, you're 110 by the time you guys get to do it. And you're laying there. I know for one thing, you're going to sit there and say, I just wish I could sing one more song or write one more song. Oh yeah. That's my goal for everyone is that they fear regret in terms of when they're 84, 85, 90, 110, whatever it is, 
that they look back at life and think, I wish I could do what I did. And the problem is 70% of Americans are disengaged at work. So how many of them are going to say that? And that's, that's the sad part for me. Yeah. I mean, I have a ton of, a ton of friends and, and you as a teacher and coach watch this. People go to high school, they go to college and they just do a thing because there's like some good money there or some, you know, quote stability and five years, eight years, 10 years goes by and they just never really question it. I think that's where self-awareness has to play a role. You got to really be asking yourself these questions, you know, all the time. Like if I get to a point where music isn't serving me, I hope I have the self-awareness to go, this isn't for me anymore. And that's okay. That's what football was. You know, that's all okay. My fear is to get to that deathbed and to go, oh my God, I never looked in the mirror and asked myself the hard questions. Am I happy? Am I doing what I love? Is this my life or is this what the idea of somebody else's life that I bought into when I was 12 that my grandma always wanted for me? That's terrifying to me. I think people really have to, and you know, it comes with consequences. It comes with sacrifices. It comes with adversity of, yeah, your parents might be pissed at you if you quit your really nice job at Wells Fargo. <laughs> like that's, that's going to happen, but they're not the person on your deathbed. Your wife isn't your person on your deathbed. You are the person that has to take your last breaths, put your head on your pillow. And if you can do that soundly, that's awesome. If you can't do that, you have to ignore the people outside of you. And that goes back to our conversation earlier. Like stop comparing, stop asking for everyone else's opinion. You know, in your heart, you have a gut feeling for a reason, trust it. And then give yourself grace and empathy. If you fail, like just go for it. Like what's the worst that can happen? Yeah. And empathy is a huge word. I think the, I always say this, empathy is the strongest word in the English language if people would understand it. Amen. I think, I think that's where a lot of people don't understand is, is putting yourself in other people's shoes gives you a purpose greater than yourself. That's the bottom line. And when I look at what you do with your music and so forth and all the things that you've said, it's so obvious the reason you love music is because it's serving a purpose that helps others. It's serving a purpose that's getting you and making other people happy and, and enjoying life and, and maybe helping them through a tough time or helping them through a great time, whatever it might be, yeah. you're always there in their mind, singing a song and telling a story and doing those things to help them get through it. And that's so awesome. It's so, I'm so proud of you. And I'm proud. I'm really proud of, you know, to the, the, just the, the ability in the guts to take a risk. Right. Thanks, that, yeah. That's kind of what we're talking about here with all this stuff, right? The ability and the guts to take a risk sometime in your life. Yeah. I, and that, it's that other conversation. I, I just got to a point. I got really quiet with myself and the voice in my head just said, it's more risky to not risk it. And that's it. it. It's more risky to get to that deathbed and be like, huh, I played by everyone else's rules. And as far as I know, we get one shot of this. Yep. And I played my whole game the whole time. And I never got to do what I wanted to do. At least try it. Yeah, that, that scared the hell out of me. So mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm so, uh, you know, you said some super kind words and I really appreciate it. And I am uh, super proud of you because at this point in your life to do what you love for so long and then to see another thing, that's what I'm talking about. You, you felt like, okay, there's another level. There's another way that I want to add value in people's lives. And, and if that's one way I could describe you, you're, you're a value adder. I've never met a person that came across you who left and said like, you know what? He didn't add any value to my life. That's who you are. You, you give so much. And so I'm really pumped to see what all this leads, uh, you know, roads that this leads you down. Cause you're just, you're one of the good ones, coach. Well, I appreciate that Spence. This has been so awesome. I got about five or six times during this whole thing, I get goosebumps just because I'm so proud of you and, and what you're saying to people, just what you've said today, if people would watch this, it, you, you've changed lives today. Um, hopefully we can get a whole bunch of people to watch this and just really understand you even more and understand and, and you can give them that um, boost and that push to go, go after their, their purpose and their perspective and their passion because that is exactly what you're doing every day with the help and support of a great family, 
of help and support of a great family and friends and so forth. But you're really the one stirring the pot here. You're the one making it go. You're the one who's overcoming adversity and, and taking the risk and doing the things. But the thing that you're always doing is you're serving people. And I just, I'm so proud of you. That's, that's what I coach and teach for. That's what I always did is to watch. I always said it for me, it was, I, I love to watch the kids perform in class or perform out on the field or whatever it might be. But for me, it was more important than 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years from now where they're at with their life. Yeah. And they're happy and they're serving and they're doing those things and they're being productive members of society. Um, that means more to me than any state championship that we won or anything like that. Yeah. It's, it's amazing to watch what you're doing. And I love your music. It's all over my iTunes and all that stuff. I'm not very technologically sound. Um, I did do the Spotify deal too. So you're on my Spotify yeah, there you go. iTunes. So I, I, I kind of know about that kind of stuff. Um, your generation knows a lot more than I do. But more importantly, I am more proud of who you are as a person and how you've gone after this dream of yours and how you serve others on a daily basis with what you're trying to do. That's what makes me more proud than the, even your music. I mean, that's, it shows what kind of human being you are. And um, I'm just so proud of you. And I want to thank you for coming on this thing uh, onto this show that I'm trying to do and to try to in help and inspire others. And what's your next project? And then I'll let you go. What's your next big thing that you're trying to do? Yeah. I mean, honestly, this was the big thing. I spent a year of my life creating uh, the albums called Wilderness. So if you haven't checked it out, just search Wilderness wherever you listen to music. And um, we're going to point to this for a while. I've got a huge idea for what's next and I'm just kind of marinating on some of this stuff. So I'll probably, you know, I just get woken up with song ideas and structures and all these things. So I'm sure something new will pop into my brain here. ASAP, for, but for the meantime, I, I really do feel so proud of this al last album that we made, and uh, I'm pumped. I think there's a whole nother life to this thing as we move into the new year, so I'm, I'm really thankful to everyone that's checked it out. And I'm just going to say this one more time. 5.5 million streams on Spotify. Now, again, I'm old. Not real sure what that means, but I know what 5.5 million means, and that's a lot. Well, and I'll, I'll tell you this, it's a lot more than 5.5 million because the latest single we put out has 5.5 million. We have a song with 11 million and yeah, I mean, that's wow. part of that 50 million total streams. So it's crazy, man. It's been a super fun year and I would have never guessed that I could do this as an independent artist. And for real, I mean, guys like you and Johnson and Paul and Ward and Ack and Carnes, when I think of like growing up and becoming a man, you guys are such a huge part of that. So I didn't hesitate at all when you asked me to do this because I, if there's any way ever I can, uh, you know, do anything for you and add value back to you and repay you guys for helping me grow into who I am. You know, if you're proud of me, you should be proud of yourself because it's, it's a huge part of, uh, uh, you know, you guys shaping us. So I appreciate you so much, coach. It's been awesome. Yeah, it has. I, I appreciate it. Have, have a good Thanksgiving and we'll get this out in probably next week sometime. That's um, perfect. Give me the link and I'll, I'll spread it like wildfire. <laughs>